Welcome to the 5 at 5 Champions League edition. My God, it has been way too long since Arsenal were in the Champions League. So it was so important that we finally get back in there, we get off to a good start and we make sure everyone knows this is where we belong. And hopefully the group stages are going to be a formality this year and for many seasons to come. I want Arsenal to go deep into this competition and really give it a good go. Anyway, Arsenal 4, PSV 0, let's get into my 5 at 5. Number 1, William Saliba, you are a bully. Yesterday, I mean look, you might be surprised, yeah we won 4 nil. unbelievable attacking football and I'm speaking about a defender, but it's got to be done. Gabriel and Saliba were both absolutely brilliant, but my god, William Saliba. 100% of his tackles he won, 100% of, of his ground duels he won, 100% of his aerial duels he won. He's just an absolute bully. And do you know what? I was so nervous with the way his Arsenal career started and him going out on loan and making certain comments about the way he was treated with Mikel Arteta. Thankfully, contract signed. He seems happy, performing really, really well at Arsenal. And honestly, this guy, future Arsenal captain, if Martin Erdgaard wasn't so young, he, he's just like the bedrock of our defence, hopefully for the next decade. An unbelievable player, and it's not going to be too long till everyone is saying that's it. Best defender in the league, absolute world class. We all know, because we watch him week in, week out, just how good he is. But yesterday did not give PSV a sniff. I love watching him. He's imperious. He's a bully. He's a Rolls Royce. They better call their next car the Rolls Royce Saliba. I've said this before, and until Rolls Royce get the message, I'm not going to rest. I have to write them a letter or something. The Rolls Royce Saliba. Get me on that waiting list. Number two, intelligence. Now, look, Arsenal are an intelligent team. We're stacked with super, super intelligent players, the likes of Saka. Jesus, Erdegaard, Trossard, so, so smart on the ball. And, you know, yesterday there was one moment, one goal, where I just feel like it epitomised that element of our play and what Mikel Arteta has drummed into this team. And that was Trossard's goal. When Gabriel Jesus gets onto that ball in the middle of the park and beats his man to set up the counter-attack, after that, everything about the play, the movement, the passing was so, so good. So, so intelligent. The first thing, knowing when to release the ball. Jesus releases it at exactly the right time with exactly the right, right weight, straight into Saka's stride. He doesn't have to check his run or ruin his momentum. Saka waits, holds onto the ball, gets his head up, doesn't panic. Jesus, what he does after doing that, he's not happy, not content with starting off that move, playing the right pass. He makes the forward run to drag defenders away from the middle of the park. Meanwhile, Trossard, who's on the left-hand side, makes a very, very timed, patient run from the outside into the central area of the pitch. All while Saka's got his head up, plays a perfect pass along the grass. When you're playing a pass for someone to hit first time, that ball needs to touch every single blade of grass on the way. And that's exactly what this ball did. It didn't bounce, it didn't bubble. It gives the person who's going to take that strike and goal every single chance of getting their technique right, getting their technique right and hitting the target. And Trossard, the way he was patient with his run, didn't try and get too ahead of the play. He knew that's what Jesus was going to do. And he came in at the right time into the area that Jesus had vacated with that forward run. It was just beautiful. Go and watch that goal again. Go and appreciate the movement. Go and appreciate the weight and timing of pass. Perfection. Such intelligent attacking play. I love to see it. Number three, it's only PSV. Listen, people are going to say, oh yeah, it's only PSV. They're rubbish. No, we made them look rubbish. PSV, in fact, their last three games have won 5-1, 4-0, 4-0. They're on good form. They haven't lost since February. Okay, they're top of the Eredivisie. They've won four out of four, 100% win record. They've got a goal difference of plus 12. They've only conceded one goal so far this season in the Eredivisie. So when they come up against Arsenal, 
they're a confident team that's used to winning. And they had a little bit of threat. Don't get me wrong. Lang and Bakayoko, they did all right. They had a bit of threat, but we were just that good. So I'm not going to hear anything about, oh, you know, PSV aren't that good. They are a decent team. No, no game in the Champions League is easy. You saw Real Madrid getting a last, last second winner at home. You know, it's never easy. And especially against a team that's used to winning and is on really, really good form. So Arsenal, they deserve all of the praise for that demolition job yesterday. It could have been more than four. And we played brilliant football as well. It's not like the goals were lucky. These goals were of very, very high quality. Well done, Arsenal. Hopefully we're hitting form just in time to do another demolition job in the North London Derby. Fingers crossed. Number four, the dreaded Premier League hangover. We cannot afford for that to happen to us. Look, this is our first Champions League game. Yes, we've done brilliantly, but we've all seen it before. A team who does really well in the week in the Champions League, especially when they're away, and thankfully we were at home, they come for their Premier League game on the weekend and they're just a shadow of themselves. We can't afford for that to happen because we've got Tottenham, as you all know, on Sunday. Then, match day two of the Champions League, the game we've got after that, Man City at home. And that's when we go away to Lons in the Champions League in the midweek. We cannot afford to have hangovers. And I think that's why you saw important players coming off yesterday, even though, as I mentioned, Erdegaard didn't come off and we need him to be on top form because what a player he is. And I'll speak about him in point five. But you might be thinking, unlucky for Arsenal, they've got such massive games after their Champions League games in Tottenham and Man City. But actually, it gets better for us afterwards because in our next four group games, the Premier League games we've got afterwards are against Sheffield United, Burnley, Wolves and Brighton. And here's something that a lot of you might miss. Luckily, and I'm not sure how many times this has happened, but in every single one of our six Premier League games, the six Champions League games, we play at home in the Premier League on the weekend afterwards. So hopefully no excuses there. And with us winning and Sevilla and Lons drawing as well, it shapes it up nicely, hopefully, for Arsenal to hopefully be able to rest players towards maybe match day five or six um, of the Champions League. So anyway, hopefully no hangover against Tottenham or Man City. And it should get easier after that. Number five, Erdegaard, world class. Tell me in the comments below, are you ready? Are you brave enough to put your stake in the ground and say Erdegaard is world class? Because you know what? I get tired of people saying, the only thing I want to see from Martin Erdegaard is more goals. What are you talking about? People who say this, respected pundits who say this, do they not watch what he's been doing? Last season, there was not a midfielder in the Premier League that scored more goals than him. I'm not accepting Salah, Rashford, Martinelli as midfielders. We all know they're not midfielders. They're wide forwards. They're attackers. They are not midfielders how Martin Erdegaard is. Martin Erdegaard got 15 goals in the Premier League last season. And so far, he's got two already. In fact, he's seven games, three goals in all comps so far this season. He scores goals. So I'm not having that as, for, as a reason he's not world class. So I want someone to tell me why is Martin Erdegaard not world class? Amazing on the ball, great technical ability, brilliant off the ball, really, really hard worker, brilliant captain. He's a, such a consistent performer. On what basis is he not world class? Doesn't even get injured. He's unbelievable. And I'm saying it right now. I am going to be brave enough to say Martin Erdegaard absolutely world class thanks for watching the five at five big game on sunday hopefully we do the business and i'll see you after that put your predictions in the comments below let me know who you think is going to start ramsdale or raya who knows i really can't second guess it anymore and also get involved in the comments as well take care see ya